It's nighttime here. Uh, All right, so I guess we we better we better keep going because, dude. Obviously, we could be doing this for four hours, five hours, no problem. So, <laughs> let's let's move it into biology for about twenty minutes, uh, and then you've got seven questions, and I tend to think that those are going to be pretty deep conversations or questions. So, um, yeah. what is your take on how these vibrations? help support, uh, let's call successionary soil movement. So from dirt to soil. Mm. All right. Maybe I should, maybe I should back it up in my experience. One of the, I, all right, just, I don't know if you know much about me. My claim to fame is I started playing with fish manure. When I was a kid, I learned how it had this benefit with plants, this relationship between fish and plants. We now call that mm -hmm. Aquaponics. Uh, back then, there was no name for it. And to be honest, people thought I was a lunatic because they were like, no, no, there's no relationship between fish and plants. But needless to say, uh, I started doing experiments on how to extract soil biology from compost that I could then apply easy to soil or to dirt to start turning it into soil. And so mm -hmm. I went through the process of what I call stripping. So it's, it's gentle collision. So I, I basically uh, take compost, submerge it in uh, an aquaculture waste. I have some castings and I agitate it. So I mechanically uh, separate it by colliding it off itself. So by colliding mm -hmm. organic matter, I'm pulling off the humates, the fulvics, uh, the humi humic acids, uh, of course, the organisms, the fungi, bacteria, protozoa, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so once I get the slurry out, I then wanted to be able to separate it to create a shelf stable product because the slurry itself is, has such a high, we call it BOD biological oxygen demand that it goes anaerobic mm -hmm. within days, within a day. And depending on the temperature, it could be hours. So I started playing around with different dewatering methods. So bags, uh, screw augers, and then I went into vibration just because I, I was I was not satisfied with these other methods. They were they were too complicated, too labor intensive. I wanted to just vibrate the liquid out of it. And so when I started getting into this using vibrator, I got into different frames, different frames, different isolation points like rubber grommets, uh, different types of vibrators, uh, different angles, four mount, two mount, uh, double vibrators, which didn't work. They canceled each other out. Um, and then I got into um, what I want to call regulators. It's kind of like a variable frequency drive. Um, and so I would notice that at certain points, depending on the concentration of the matrix that was in this uh, vibrator, I, I, I like to call it a chymatic uh, separator or uh, a chymatic waterer. When I got to a certain point in that vibration, the water just fell out of the matrix, just fell out of the compost. Mm. If I was too high or too low, it would just kind of drip, drip, drip. But once I hit that sweet spot, resonance, for lack of better words, that liquid just fell mm. out. Now, when I took that liquid and started applying it to uh, engineered soil, which is 99% sand, 1% organic matter, which you cannot get advanced biology to hold because everything just washes through. There's not enough organic matter for the fungi to colonize. Uh, so they die mm -hmm. off immediately. But what I noticed was when I applied this to these engineered soils, two applications in, I would get about six to eight inches of chocolate sand. Now I did not affect the structural integrity of the soil because think about a putting green. It's gotta be rock. It's gotta be like a pool table, right? Um, so you can't affect the structural integrity of, of the engineered soil, but the only way to get life into it is to create a complex, uh, a matrix that supports the, the biology, the fungi and the protozoa. What it did was aggregate. So that was vi by vibrating this organic matter. When it came into contact with the sand, it started to bond the sand particles together in a way that they would aggregate. And then as they aggregated, now they held more water. Um, they allowed all this advanced biology to take hold and the plants just absolutely exploded. So that's, that's kind of why I'm, I'm throwing you down this rabbit hole of trying to understand like 
was it the sound was it the was it the magnetic charge was it the stimulation of the electron or was it just the fact that we created the aggregates that that stimulated the biology to explode what do you think on that one yeah well uh i'm glad you told the story uh that's very interesting one thing uh it has to do with the water for sure uh every water molecule is a little magnet because it's a dipole it's polar so those are just some of the terms and you have the two uh it's h2o so you have the two hydrogens you have the oxygen they have this bend between them and the electrons are attracted to the the new you know the, the like atomic nucleus of these a little bit differently so you're more likely to find them in certain areas than others and that will overall change the charge distribution because you have protons which are positive neutrons which are neutral and electrons which are negative so you get a slight positive charge and then you get slight negative charge on a water molecule so it is a mini magnet as a result and what happens in the atmosphere, for example, with the clouds or rainstorms or thunderstorms is uh, they get electrified. The, the stronger these vibrations and the stronger the wind and everything, it's moving all past it, uh, itself and everything, it builds up these big charges. So you working with sound by physically vibrating this material, you're effectively putting charge into the water and giving it charge and water has been shown to be able to hold electromagnetic energy and it can actually capture some of these energies which uh we didn't think was possible until we learned about um they're called water quantum coherency domains it's able to capture some of these very low frequency energies and hold on to them that's a kind of a different story though very very interesting though um, but regardless you by vibrating that you were a uh, different molecules have different weights, different sizes or rocks or whatever. They all have their own specific resonance. So uh, yeah, doing that frequency sweep would then move through that. Uh, but the water itself by being vibrated was building up this charge and then take, it would hold on to that pretty nicely. Water holds on to a charge pretty well, especially if it has ions contained within it, which if you did this whole thing, a lot of those ions would have also move with the water because they have a charge the water has a charge they're like hey we're all friends already let's just go together so then they would leave and then those ions would facilitate a lot of the binding to create that chocolate sand as you called it uh because quartz crystals like this one right here uh they are pretty resistive but if you can start to find two different sites like little micro erosion spots that things can latch on to like open ends and you can start to uh break down and create like more organic matter or more um i guess like living soil you could say um you know there's living matrix matrixes so it sounds like uh you discovered uh, that sound vibrations are able to create electromagnetic vibrations and charges within the water and these different matrices and mediums. 